Students study molecules with all of the structures they possess. Proteins, fats, and DNAs. There must be a million ways to evaluate our knowledge for the test. Biochem is beautiful, our professor said. Well, I hope you enjoyed the musical stylings of Biochem is Beautiful. We're starting off our Chapter 3 Flip Notes on Biochemistry. This is your first installment where we're going to introduce the macromolecules as well as go over dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis. So what is a macromolecule? It's a very large organic compound built by bonding together smaller, simpler molecules called monomers. As you get progressively larger, they have other names, monomers, dimers, and finally polymers. The one unit that helps with the creation of all of these polymers is the carbon atom. The carbon atom, remember, has the ability to bond single, double, or triple bonds because it only has the four valence electrons. This next slide I put in here because it demonstrates not only the glucose molecule but also the dystrophin which is a very complex molecule. We will be actually putting together a glucose molecule with our molecular model kits but the dystrophin is a little bit beyond what we're capable of. This next slide, you will see a bunch of monomers. Starting at the top left hand, it's a monomer for a carbohydrate. Then we have the amino acid going clockwise. The carbohydrate again, then a nucleic acid, an amino acid, a nucleic acid, and finally a lipid. I know you would find it very difficult to believe, but by the end of this unit, you'll be able to look at these monomers and determine which category protein, carbohydrate, lipid, or nucleic acid they should be sorted into. What happens is you have to look at these and um, there are identifiers. For the first one here, we have the amino acid, which is the monomer. When they are strung together, you get a polypeptide or protein. And they can be used in many different functions. One is for a filament. The second one that you are showing here is the nucleotide, which is the monomer for nucleic acid. It is often found in the DNA structure, and as DNA coils, we can get the chromosome. The third in this slide is the monosaccharide, and the monosaccharide, when you build it up through dehydration synthesis, becomes a starch. This can oftentimes be found in the um, chloroplasts as a grana. Um, and of course, the last one here is the fatty acid, which is the, mono, uh, the monomer for a lipid, and when you put them together you get the triglyceride and this can be found in many different cells. So how do we get from a monomer to a polymer? Well this can happen through something called dehydration synthesis. Sometimes it's referred to as a condensation reaction. Both terms describe the same thing. When you are dehydrating, you're pulling out the water. In synthesis, you're actually making something. So a dehydration synthesis process is pulling out the water to build the polymer. In condensation, likewise, you're condensing the water, pulling it out in a reaction that is building those polymers from the monomer. So the next two slides, what we see are two different condensation reactions or dehydration synthesis. The first one is the building of a dipeptide through two amino acids joining. You can see we've circled the hydroxide and the hydrogen. The OH and the H come together to form H2O, water. You pull that out 
and the, in the peptide bond that is created, the bond is created with the nitrogen. Each monomer will create different bonds as they go through the dehydration synthesis. The second one that you're looking at here, you're looking at glucose pooling out the water, and this time you're going to get maltose or sucrose. Now both of the dimers that have been created were just creating one bond. If you were breaking it, we go in reverse and we do use a process called hydrolysis or hydrolysis. Hydro meaning water, lysis meaning breaking. So you're breaking the bond while adding water. You take the word apart and you see what it means. Our first example that we're going to look at is actually the breaking down of sucrose. You can see in this slide how water, H2O, is again broken down into hydroxide and hydrogen as it breaks the bond. The oxygen actually adheres to the hydrogen and the OH is then added to the glucose. So now we have two monomers again, a glucose and a fructose. Now while this was a very specific example, I have included in the next slide actually a very general approach. It doesn't specify what type of monomer it is. It could be um, amino acid for protein or it could be uh, fatty acid for the lipid. The important part to remember is whether it's a dimer or a polymer, all you have to do is add the water to break the bond. Every time you add one molecule of water, you end up breaking one bond. So before we end this installment, let's take a look at the four compounds of life. The first one, the carbohydrate, sometimes referred to as a sugar, a simple sugar, or even a complex carb. They're primarily found in grains, fruits, vegetables. Sometimes they're processed, sometimes unprocessed. But the major function is for energy, short-term energy. They have structural support and sometimes, uh, well, always, ID in cell membrane. The carbohydrate is always composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, found in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. This is actually one of the things that we use to identify it for a carbohydrate. The lipid is our next compound of life. The lipid is sometimes referred to as fats, oils, steroids, and waxes. They can be found in meats, dairies, legumes, seeds, nuts. Although they're found in vegetables, it's at a much smaller quantity. Think about a vegetable oil. What they're used for is long-term storage of energy, water barriers, and also it's a primary component in a phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane. The next compound of life is the protein. This is a chain, sometimes a polypeptide chain. It's amino acids that are chained together with a peptide bond. They are again found in meats, dairies, and legumes, and they are the workhorse of all living things. Everything we do can be tied to some protein. Structural movement, transportation, communication, even our chemical reactions with the enzymes all go back to the protein. Our final compound of life is the nucleic acid. The monomer for that is a nucleotide, and this is found in every single cell. It is primary function is for it to store and transmit the hereditary information in DNA and RNA, but it's also one of our energy carriers uh, with the ATP and ADP. Our four compounds of life make up everything we are. From our muscles, which are the proteins, the wax in our ears and cuticles, we have lipids, our hair is protein. Every time we move we're using the car. Also, when you're looking at the resemblance to your parents, you're obviously looking at your nucleic acid, your DNA. All of these together make up wow. what we are. We need to make sure that when we are thinking about the composition of any living thing, 